Five years ago, I got my first taste of virtual reality by way of the HTC Vive when I attended PAX in Seattle, Washington. Although I really wanted to pick up a virtual reality headset at that time, the cost was just too high and less expensive VR experiences like the Samsung Gear VR were reviewed by some as being subpar experiences. Fast forward to October 2020 and the introduction of the Oculus Quest 2 and my oh my how things have changed. To be honest, I didn't really follow VR technology very closely after trying the Vive back in 2016 because all the top rated headsets at the time were just too expensive. And not to mention, you also had to own a pretty high end gaming PC to connect them to to even be able to use them. The Oculus Quest 2 though, I feel is looking to change all of that. I picked up my Quest 2 a little over a month ago and this thing has done nothing but impress me with its capabilities. Especially when you consider that the 64 gigabyte model I have here is only 299 US dollars. There are two different models of the Oculus Quest 2. I got the 64 gigabyte model, but there is also a 256 gigabyte model that sells for an additional $100. And you can pick up either model at my Amazon store. Link in the video description. The Quest 2 has this storage built into it because unlike other headsets like its predecessor, the Rift, or the HTC Vive, or even Valve's current flagship headset, the Index, there is no gaming PC required to play VR games on the Quest 2. You can connect the Quest 2 to your Wi-Fi and download games directly to the headset. Very similar to how you install apps on your smartphone and then launch and play them anywhere. Although it's not exactly recommended because you need to keep the Quest 2 out of direct sunlight for the IR tracking to work properly and to prevent potential damage to the display, since the Quest 2 is completely wireless, you can take the Quest 2 outside and enjoy the largest VR play space possible. As an aside, many of the other headsets also use devices called lighthouses or base stations, which you have to put up somewhere in your VR play space. And the headset tracks those lighthouses in order to calculate where you are at in your play space and where you are looking. Yeah, the Quest 2 does not need those either. Everything you need to begin enjoying VR comes in the box with the Quest 2. There's the headset, the right and left Oculus touch controllers, and a charging adapter and cable. Oh, there's also this spacer if you wear glasses and need to create a little more room so your glasses don't make contact with the headset's lenses. It even has speakers built into the head strap so you can hear the games you're playing. There is also a headphone jack if you'd rather use some other headphones, but yeah, it's literally as simple as powering the headset on, putting it on your face, and strapping the controllers to your wrists. There are a ton of games that run natively on the Quest 2. Beat Saber is probably the most popular VR game in existence right now, and there is a version of the game that you can play directly on the Quest 2. The graphics on some of these games are a step down, however, from what you get in PC games, but that's to be expected, seeing as the Quest 2 is essentially running on the same type of hardware that you would find in a smartphone. There are, of course, other games that are not available for the Quest 2 because they require a bit more computational and graphical horsepower to run them. Now, this doesn't mean you can't enjoy those games, however. If you have a gaming PC capable of running PC VR games, you can pair the Quest 2 with your PC and play those games too. If you have a high-speed USB 3 cable, you can connect the Quest 2 to your PC using what is called Oculus Link, which I feel is just fine for stuff like driving games and flight simulators and stuff, but for other games like Half-Life Alex, which is an amazing VR experience by the way, and other games, being tethered to your computer kind of flies in the face of what the Quest 2 is all about. You know, that untethered freedom. Well, there is another way to connect your Quest 2 to your gaming PC using what is called Oculus Air Link. This allows you to wirelessly stream games from your PC to the Quest 2 using your home network's 5GHz Wi-Fi. 
freaking sick. Your PC does need to be connected to your router using an ethernet cable for this to work. And it's also recommended your play space be near your router. Even though it's still a beta feature as of the making of this video, AirLink works incredibly well. And being able to play games like Half-Life Alex without a cable dragging around to get tangled up in is nothing short of awesome. One thing I found kind of disappointing when I first used the HTC Vive back in 2016 was what is called the screen door effect. What's happening in a VR headset is you're looking at a pair of screens through a set of lenses that magnify the image on those screens. Of course, as you magnify the image, the individual pixels become more apparent, revealing a visible grid as if you're looking at things through a screen door. When I first put the Oculus Quest 2 on, I was pleasantly surprised to see that this is almost non-existent on this headset. The Quest 2 has a screen resolution of 1832 by 1920 pixels per eye, which is a higher resolution screen than most any other headset on the market as of the making of this video. For comparison, the Valve Index, which currently costs 1,000 US dollars, only has a resolution of 1440 by 1600 pixels per eye. Another feature of the Quest 2 that took me by surprise when I learned about it is hand tracking. On the outside of the headset are four 3D cameras. These are used to track where you are in your play space and the direction you're looking at any given time. These cameras can also be used to track your hands, meaning some games don't even require controllers. Just the headset and your hands. So far, I've only played one game that takes advantage of this feature called Elixir. It's really just a tech demo showing off the hand tracking capability of the Quest 2, but I feel this is giving us a glimpse into the future of VR and potentially gaming as a whole. Speaking of the cameras on the Quest 2, a cool feature Oculus has implemented is you can simply double tap the headband where it connects to the headset on either the right or left side and it will switch over to pass-through mode, meaning you can use the cameras to see the real world around you. It's a kind of weird looking 3D black and white view you get, sort of similar to what you'd see in a night vision image from a security camera or something, but it does allow you to see what's going on around you without having to take the headset off, which is pretty cool. Want other people in the room with you to be able to see what you see? No problem. Using the Oculus app on your smartphone or tablet, you can cast what the person wearing the headset is seeing to your tablet or phone. And if you have a Chromecast, you can even cast it to your TV so everyone in the room can see why you're flailing your arms around as if you're being swarmed by bees. As of right now, you're only able to cast the video stream from the Quest 2 to a Chromecast device. Whether or not Oculus will add support for other devices like Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV is unknown at this point. Well, at least unknown by me. As much as I've gushed about the Quest 2 so far in this video, it isn't exactly a perfect device. The field of view is good, but it could be better. There's a little bit of cropping at the top and bottom, but it really isn't that bad at all. Your peripheral vision, on the other hand, is noticeably limited. This is only a minor gripe though, because once you get into a game, you get so focused on what you're doing that the limited peripheral vision is completely forgotten as the vast majority of your field of view is filled with the game world. Earlier in the video, I praised the Quest 2 for its high resolution display. Uh, my second gripe though, actually has to do with the display. Because Oculus chose to use an LCD screen, things that are supposed to be black are more dark gray rather than actually looking black. This oftentimes makes dark areas in games look more like you're walking through thick smoke or something rather than it looking like it's dark. 
While it's not a deal breaker for me, I would have liked to see them use an OLED or some other panel technology that would allow for better blacks. But at the same time, at its price point, I really can't complain too much as the LCD panel is capable of a 120 hertz refresh rate, which helps gameplay feel smooth and can also help prevent motion sickness. Depending on your point of view, my next point could be either a good thing or a bad thing. The battery life of the Quest 2 is around two hours. For hardcore gamers that like long play sessions, this could be a deal breaker for you. However, if you're a parent and you want to limit how much time your kids are spending in VR, this two hour limit is a nice way to regulate their time. Or if you're like me and can easily get sucked into a game and lose track of how much time has passed, this two hour limit helps keep me from getting sucked in for too long. Cause once the battery has run down, there's nothing else to do but stop. As for charging time, it also takes about two hours to fully charge the battery once it's been run all the way down. My final gripe is probably my biggest one, and that is you must have a Facebook account in order to use the Oculus Quest 2. Since Oculus is owned by Facebook, they decided to force all of us that want to own a Quest 2 to also have a Facebook account. This wasn't a big deal for me since I've had a Facebook account for a long time now, but yeah, you know, Facebook. All of you young kids watching this who think Facebook is for old people, well, unless your parents let you use their accounts, you're going to have to set up a Facebook account in order to play. So is the Oculus Quest 2 worth its asking price? That's up to you to decide. VR has really come a long way in just five short years, and I feel like the Quest 2 is just the beginning of a very exciting future. Where do you think VR is going from here? Are you ready to jump in now or do you want to wait a little longer and see what the next generation of headsets have to offer? Hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think and uh, do the YouTube things, they help a lot. Thanks.